Jetbeam has reintroduced an updated RRT01 for 2019. This is an exciting EDC light because it has a infinitely variable control ring here at the top, meaning it's an affordable rotary light. It comes with a USB rechargeable 16340 battery, but it also takes 18350s. Thanks to Banggood for sending this to me to take a look at. As a reminder guys, make sure you check the description below. I have coupons to this light, as well as I've started a Patreon. Now, that's something I've debated doing for a long time, but decided finally now is the right time. Make sure you click that link and read all about it in the description below. So here is the packaging the light comes on. It's a pretty standard retail hanging box from Jetbeam. Banggood has kindly put their label on here and some ugly Chinese yellow packing tape on here. Hopefully your copy is a little bit uh, cleaner if you get one. On the back there is all the statistics about the light and I'll zoom in on the table there so you can see it. The light comes with a whole host of accessories. You get a Jetbeam branded 16340 battery here. It is micro USB rechargeable and a button top. You get a USB, micro USB cable to charge that. You get the manual. You get a jet beam lanyard here, that's pretty nice. And then you get a little bag of accessories. You get an extra O-ring, you get a hex key, and then you get two extra screws for the clip. So this light is made from aluminum and is anodized a dark gray with matching control bezel here being silver. And it's kind of nice that it's not black. I've got an O-light here to compare it to that is black. You can see they're close, but not the exact same color. Machining is very good. Starting at the tail here, you have a spot for three tritium vials that are 12 millimeters long. It's flat, so the light tail stands well, which is always nice. You also have a place here for a lanyard to go through. Although if that lanyard is attached, the light doesn't tail stand as well, so I've included to uh, leave it off my light for now. The body section here and tail are all one piece. On the body section, you've got some nice knurling here. It's not really sharp. It's just kind of nice. Gives you a little extra grip and for style points there. You've got two flats that are milled into the light on either side for the branding and your serial numbers tucked in right there. The light then grows to in size to accept the head and control ring here. The rotary control ring has some areas milled into it to provide a bit of extra grip. And the detent here um, is fairly strong on both ends. You've got one at the top end and on the bottom end. From off to 100% is about 160 degrees of rotation, 150, somewhere in there. The control ring itself isn't super um, crisp. It's a little bit mushy uh, and takes a little bit of decent effort to rotate here, but overall is really nice. And it's got enough resistance where it stays in place. You can shake the light uh, and that ring isn't moving anywhere from that setting you've got it set on. I really like this rotary up front here. I'll just let you know that. It really allows you to dial in whatever brightness level you want. Just a briefer demonstration of that. So it's 100%. Obviously, you can't see anything. And I can dial it down here all the way to the end. And this is still on. Um, camera's not picking it up. There it is. Um, but yeah, you can dial this thing down to basically sublumen easily. And it's still on. Then you just click it to go off. The head here has some additional milling areas that complement that control ring. And this be front bezel is aluminum with just a little bit of a uh, uh, crenulations in there. And best of all, this is not glued in place. Um, very easy to remove. The lens comes out and you can get to the emitter and reflector in there. So that should mean this light's moddable. While not the smallest 16340 light on the market, the RRT01 really makes a nice EDC in my opinion. A big part of that is the pocket clip, as you can see here, and this is a pretty good pocket clip. Jetbeam wisely decided to make this uh, compatible with the standard screw variety, so you can get steel flame clips, Okuma clips, Overready, and others. I've got a picture here where I put a uh, Overready clip on it to see what it looks like. The stock clip for me just has a little bit too much um, upswept here on the edge. Really, it's not too bad. It's also a little bit thin, but that means it's springy. 
Um, you could also attach your lanyard on there. Overall, good clip, fairly deep carry here. You're still gonna have a little bit of a light poke out of your pocket, but uh, I'm okay with that, and I think it's a nice combination. I measured the light at 81 millimeters. Maximum diameter was 26 millimeters at the head. Minimum diameter was 20 millimeters at the body here. Weight with the included battery and clip was only 93 grams. So a little bit of comparison with some peer lights here. I've got the Olight S1R Baton 2, MSR D4, and the jet beam there. You can see the jet beam is the longest, but if we take a look here at the end, the MSR is the fattest, the Olight is the narrowest. Um, nice combination of comparisons there. If we compare it to a couple of other lights here, out of the price range of the jet beam, we've got the Overready Boss in the, in the uh, 18350 configuration and the Raylight Dawn in brass here. We can see they're very comparable in overall length and uh, fairly comparable in overall diameter as well. And here is the dollar bill test to kind of give you a scale to see what the RRT01 is sized on a dollar bill. So here is a shot of the LED of the RRT01. It's using a Cree XPL HI LED in cool white. No tint data is given, but it's cool white with no undesirable tints. Um, the XPL high isn't my favorite LED, but it's far from the worst. And it's pretty decent in this light. The beam has a slight donut that you only really notice at lower power levels or at really close distances. Around the hot spot, there's a thin reflection. Um, it does give a small artifacts in the outer rings when it's brighter. It's noticeable, but not a deal killer for me given the light's strengths. I did two uncooled runtime tests, one with the included 700 milliamp hour 16340 and the other with a 1200 milliamp hour 18350. With the 16340, the total output on the highest output lasted a total of 24 minutes during this output decreased slowly and partially linearly before low voltage protection kicked in on the battery itself overall runtime using the 1200 milliamp hour unprotected 18350 was similar but a different story output was a little bit more stable at the top and total output increased over 40 minutes technically longer but i'll get to that in a minute outputs were pretty smooth and similar, but the 30 minute mark, we saw a lot of very little steps and then the light, uh, very end of the light flash lets you know that the cell was very low. However, instead of cutting off output here, the light continued to run since the flashlight itself has no low voltage protection. My recommendation would be to run this with a protected battery or just charge it fairly frequently to avoid damaging the cell if you are using the low voltage protection. So one little thing I didn't mention earlier, this is the 16340 in the light itself. You can see lots of uh, room left in that body. If I pop in an 18350, you can see it does a really nice job of taking up all the space in the light and it does fit fine. If you've got a button top or a protected cell in there, um, you'll get just a little bit of this copper bezel showing here, just about like that. So it's one thing to keep in mind, it's not really that big of a problem. All right, tonight I'm taking a look at the Jet Beam RRT-01, and this is the 2019 edition. And this is an infinitely variable flashlight, so I can just dial it up here. And this is maximum brightness, 450 lumens. This is an EEC style flashlight. So if I look down closely more at my feet here, you can see it really ramps down pretty smoothly, very evenly. It's still on here goes incredibly low while still on but it's very quick and bright since it's a rotary it adjusts quickly it's really to how bright you need it and want it I love this it's smooth it's even it does have some PWM that I noticed mostly on really really low modes um, beam pattern here at short distance is pretty decent it's got a few rings it's not perfect um, it is more of a cool white, but not blue. For EDC, it's really nice. If I transition up here, we can see even the low power. You can see my neighbor's fence. If I bring it up to full power here, 
we can see into the neighbor's yard okay, no problem. So this is throws decently well for EDC. It's not really a flood, not really a thrower either, kind of just that perfect EDC type beam. And you can see it does have some flashing modes here. Here's kind of a SOS. And this is 950 lumens. Versus normal high, which is just 450. Again, this is one of my favorite EDCs that I've really enjoyed. And I can recommend it wholeheartedly. I think I might even try an LED swap with this to swap something in warm, maybe high CRI. But other than that, this is just about perfect. Definitely recommend you pick up one of these. So UI in this light is super simple. As I demonstrated before, instead of buttons, it uses this control ring. It's a rotary switch in the bezel. So all I have to do is move past that detent and I come all the way on. You've got a detent at the top again. Doesn't really need it, but it's got it. It runs about 150 degrees from off to on. On low, this is super low as I demonstrated before here. You can turn it on really as low as you want. Uh, not many lights allow you to get this low this easily. And then you just turn to keep going up or turn to go down. There's also a strobe if you rotate this light to maximum brightness, come off and go on. Do that two times and you get strobe there. It's a little bit tricky to uh, get to turn on. One of the neat features though is then you can vary the output of that strobe. Your rotary switch is still there. So you can go on or you can go off, just a little bit of strobe or a lot of strobe, kind of cool. If you do that three times, you get the SOS, um, rotate it all the way to off and then back on again and you have your constant on modes. Jetbeam included the, a branded 700 milliamp hour 16340 battery, which has recharging built in via micro USB. Charging speed was 0.4 amps, which is what you want for these small capacity batteries. It took right at two hours to charge completely. The LED indicators on the battery go from red when charging to green when charged. Light will also take those 18350 batteries as I was showing too. These fill up the cavity better, although no rattle with the 16340 that's included, which is nice. But if you're using a protected 18350, it might not screw down completely flush. And this doesn't harm the IPX8 water resistance of the light. So for me, the pros are it takes the 18350 batteries, including protected cell, which I love. These are my preferred small battery format. Um, for me, the pros are it's got a great clip, uh, great for EDC. It's a nice size as well. I love that rotary switch and it's in a small affordable package. Rotary switches tend to only be on larger lights and they tend to get fairly expensive. And it's got an easily modifiable emitter and it takes standard clips if you want to change out a clip from the stock. The cons are there's a few beam artifacts. Uh, there's no low voltage protection built into the light. So running a protected battery would be a good idea. It's not a completely smooth beam profile. There are a few extra rings here and there. My conclusion is the Jetbeam RRT01 2019 edition is a really nice EDC light. It's been my EDC since I got it for about a week, and that's saying something. The rotary control rings on this small light are not common, and I really think it should be used more on more lights. It allows you to get exactly the right amount of illumination you need for your specific application very quickly. The RRT T does a lot of things really well for an EDC, in my opinion. The stock clip is pretty good for a fairly decent deep carry, and it's easily swapped out if you want to personalize it more or you want a different look. Modding of this light is pretty big too. There's some talk already of people putting triples in this light, so that'd be pretty awesome. I'll definitely be paying attention to that. I'll probably look into an LED swap here in the coming weeks to get something with a little bit higher CRI, maybe a little bit warmer tint. Overall, this is a great little EDC light, and I'm glad Jetbeam revived the design and updated it for 2019. I definitely recommend it. Banggood has provided me with a pretty good coupon on this light, so if you're interested, make sure you just check out the description below this video and my blog post if, so you can make sure to check that out. The channel does get a small cut if you buy it through me, and I appreciate that as it helps me continue to make videos like this for you. 
As always, guys, if you've got any questions, please make sure you leave them in the description below, and I'll do my best to answer. And as always, make sure you're subscribed and like the video so you can catch the next review.